Thank you for joining us. This is Live with Miami's Community News, and I'm Michael Miller. Special guest is Mackenzie Price, co-founder of Alpha School, and two-hour leader. Learning. Learning. Two-hour learning. Can you believe okay. that kids could learn in two hours what it takes traditional school six hours a day to learn? Okay. And we're going to we're going to talk about that. You have quite, quite a background and things. I'm just going to read off some things. Great, okay? I want to hear it. Okay. GT School, your co-founder of multiple innovative educational ventures. So one is GT School. Yes. I'm going to go through all these: Next Gen Academy, Texas Sports Academy, Alpha Schools, Two Hour Learning, and you pioneered AI dr driven educational models. I did. Yeah. All of those schools are built off of this two hour learning academic model that um, I created. How did you do that? Well, I will tell you, Michael, I don't think there's anything like a mama bear who wants what's best for her kids to create action. And that's exactly what I was. So I'm a mom of two daughters. And uh, when it was time for them to go to school, uh, we sent them down the street to our local uh, public school. But pretty quickly, I found that they were getting frustrated with sort of the lack of ability to sort of personalize what they were doing uh, in school every day. And about halfway through my oldest daughter's second grade year, she came home one day and she said, Mom, I don't want to go to school tomorrow. And I said, what do you mean? You love school. And she looked at me and she said, school is so boring. And in that moment, I just had this thought of like, oh my goodness, in two and a half years, they've taken a kid who's like tailor made to love school and they've wiped away that passion. And I realized in that moment, it wasn't an issue with my daughter's school. It wasn't a teacher's fault. It was the model of education, this teacher in front of a classroom, one teacher teaching to 15, 20, 25 students at a time, that was the problem. And so I looked around my community and I didn't see anything that was going to solve that issue. So I kind of realized I think I have to build this myself. So I started my first school in 2014. And uh, the premise of that school and what's still true today is that um, we provide children with personalized mastery base one-to-one -one education and as a result our students are able to learn twice as fast as a child in a normal classroom uh, and they're able to do it in only two hours a day and then of course one of the things I found Michael is that uh, parents don't want their kids to come home after two hours, right? School is a bundle. Yeah. And so we spend all of our afternoons in our schools doing life skills development. So learning things like public speaking and financial literacy and teamwork and grit and communication and how to deal with failure and give and receive feedback. And we make school really fun. So people, your stu students, they will have an opportunity here in Miami on, on Miller Road, yes. right? Miller Drive, I'm sorry, and 80th Street, yes, 80th, 80th Avenue, yep. right across from Tropical Park. Exactly. Right. We, um, we've we been uh, with schools in Texas for the past 10 years, and we opened our Alpha School campus in Miami this past fall. What made you think in 2014 that you could do this? It completely against everything that was there before. And you said, I don't know, I'm 25 years old. Let me go ahead and start this thing. I, you know, I was one of those people actually growing up. I was very good at school, but I didn't like school. I was always that kid in the classroom who would raise my hand and be like, why do I need to know this? How's this going to help me later on? And so I think when I was looking at this originally, I wanted to just find out what would be best for my two daughters in that moment. And that's what I kind of started building. Now, years later, we've got hundreds of students, and we've even got thousands of students in Europe who are learning with two-hour learning. Um, and it's just kind of grown into something bigger. And here's the beauty, is that technology has enabled us to completely revolutionize the way that children are educated, and it's allowed us to transform the role of the teacher in the classroom. Instead of having to create lesson plans and do lectures and grade homework, the adults in our classrooms are able to focus on exactly what they're great at, which is motivating and encouraging and connecting with their students. And how are they able to do that? Yeah. With your plan, I don't know how yeah. versus before. Yeah. So before, a teacher in a classroom has such a challenging job. They're responsible for providing education for multiple children, no matter where they're at academically, no matter what they know or don't know. They have to go through this kind of time based curriculum and deliver material. What we've done at our schools is we have created an AI tutor and we use adaptive app technology so that every single student is working at exactly the pace and level that is right for them. That's why we're able to get such incredible learning outcomes. Our students are literally in the top 2% 
nationwide for this, but our, our teachers are not having to spend time doing this teaching. Instead, their total focus is being experts on their children. So they do everything from one-on-one -on -one limitless meetings every week with every single one of their students where the whole goal of that is to connect with the student, find out what's happening in their life, what are they excited about, what are they interested in, and then how can they use those interests that a student has to help propel them in whatever they're doing at school. 25 years ago, there were plenty of TV commercials were 60 seconds, mm -hmm. and then it was 45, and then it was 30. And now they're like five seconds. Have you ever seen any of my Instagram stuff that I do no. at Future of Education? No. If you go to my Future of Education on Instagram, I communicate a lot of these ideas in like 10 second bursts. So, so, so we have changed as a, as a as a global community. We have to get information quickly because mm -hmm. we're waiting for the next big rush on to the next one. Yeah. But what it's it's proven to all of us, and you've now proven it. You don't need this much time to do stuff. You might be able to deliver it in a shorter time if we can keep the kids stimulated. You know to do that. So let's talk about you've been you've. Um, You've been on some Apple podcasts. You have 400,000 followers. I have, yeah, I think I'm at uh, about 500,000 followers on Instagram, and I have a podcast called Future of Education mm -hmm. where we talk about all of the ways that education really is going to be changing and how we can better prepare our, our children for you know this new world, right? What is that future? And one of the things I think, you know, you and I grew up and it was all about the three R's, reading, writing, and arithmetic, right? Now it's about the four C's. It's critical thinking communication, creativity, and collaboration. Those are the skills that our young people need in order to be successful in this world. And so what we believe at Alpha School is that we can crush academics, provide these kids with all of the information that they need in their brain to be great critical thinkers, and then help them develop the tools they need to go be successful. And most importantly, figure out that intersection of like their passions and their talents while they're in school. And I don't know, that to me seems like kind of a dream you, way of spending time. You've done some national interviews. Congratulations. I have. Yeah, That's we've wonderful. been getting a lot of great attention as a result of what's happening with our model and our results. When did you get so smart? <laughs> Is it something that you, you you were aware of in 2014? Or did, did when you started, you go, I got this? You know, here's the thing, Michael. I think... <clears throat> You know, what makes communities valuable is individuals who will say, you know what, what can I do to impact this small part of my footprint? Like, what is it that I can do? So I certainly didn't go out in 2014 thinking, okay, I want to launch schools across the country. Like I said, I really wanted what was best for my children. And then over time, I started realizing, like, I could grow this footprint. And I don't know, I think if, if all of us had that kind of attitude, there's nothing special about me. I am... You know, I've got a lot of lot of challenges, um, but I think that you know maybe my story is an example of when people see a need, they can say, you know what, what can I do to help with this? Was it a was it an ha ha ha, an, ha, ha moment, a sort of self actualizing? You said bingo, and you saw this picture. You know what was interesting is I had a conversation with the principal at my daughter's school back in 2014 when my kids were in second grade and kindergarten, and she is a wonderful, dedicated administrator, which I believe people who choose to work in classrooms every day, they're heroes. The teachers, the administrators who are, who are able to do that, because those jobs are you know, underpaid, they're overworked, and they're underappreciated. But I was having this conversation with this principal about some of the frustrations and that my daughters were, were so bored. And she looked at me and she said, Mackenzie, I completely understand what your, your challenge is, but this is like trying to steer the Titanic. It's just not possible. And I will say at that moment is when I had this light bulb light bulb thought of like, okay, it's not about trying to fix or massage this current model of education. It's about dismantling and, and revolutionizing, building something new. And so that's what I'm kind of working through is creating a distribution system where families can find uh, a school that's right for their kid. So we know in Dade County and across the country that charter schools mm -hmm. were like monstrous in 20 years ago or 15 years ago. Yeah. It's like, what? A charter school? No, public high school and then the private ones. Yeah. Well, now we look on, on every, every, it feels like literally on every corner there's another one because the, the parents, the students wanted something more and they yeah. were able to do it probably because the institution wasn't as large and cumbersome as the, most of the school boards. So let's talk a little bit uh, more about AI. Yeah. How did you figure out 
this we could apply this to school. Yeah. Well, we started out with our school models using adaptive app technology, and those adaptive apps are apps that have been out for at least 10 years. And a lot of those apps are apps that some schools will maybe use a little bit. But here's the thing, just giving a child an app and saying, hey, let me know when you've graduated high school, it doesn't really work. Um, what we have kind of figured out, and the expertise that, that I have an awesome team that's worked with me on this, we've figured out is that there are certain apps that are great for certain levels and certain subjects. And then what I have kind of built around that is this AI tutor. So in the last couple of years, of course, everyone talks about AI, right? Uh, but in the last couple of years, what we've been able to create is an AI tutor that makes sure to guide a student through their personal learning path, making sure that they're always learning at the right level and at the right pace and that they're efficiently learning, right? Because we can really deliver this incredible academic result for any student, whether a student's behind or or they're super advanced, it's truly amazing. And here's the thing about an AI tutor. An AI tutor doesn't care if a student is white, black, or brown. It doesn't care if a student is rich or poor. It doesn't care if a student is in the 85th percentile academically or the 10th percentile. It's infinitely patient. And so what we've been able to do is really raise the floor of what's possible for those students that are behind and explode the ceiling for those students that need to have you know, more advanced work. Let me ask you a question. When you were in school, were you bored in school because you I maybe understood out that stuff? Window all the time. Were you I can't really? wait to get out there. Yeah. Right? Well, and let me tell you an example of that. We have a student at one of our schools who often is looking out the window. You know why? He loves birds. He's obsessed with birds. And so what our guide, those are our teachers at our school, our guide was able to figure out, okay, this kid is obsessed with birds. So what we're going to do is we're going to put together a motivational structure where if he gets his goals done each day, it earns him time for him and his guide to go outside and go bird watching. And that right there took a kid who was constantly gazing out the window, distracted, and instead saying, what do I need to do to get my work done so that my guide and I can go out and discover a new bird? And that's a perfect example of when adults have the time and flexibility to say, let me become an expert in my student. That's where we can see incredible results from an academic perspective. So let's talk about the two-hour learning yeah. phase. Tell us, give us an overview of what happens in that two hours. Yeah, absolutely. Well, our students uh, go to full day school. So they come to school every morning at 8.30 in the morning. They start out with a limitless launch. Think like Tony Robbins for kids. It's a time for kids to get clear on what their goals are for the day, uh, get excited and learn some sort of like growth mindset strategy that they'll be able to incorporate in their day as they go into their two hour learning session. Then during their core skills academic block, um, they get onto a computer and they're, they're each given exactly whatever material they need to learn. So you could have two seven-year-olds sitting next to each other. One seven-year-old might be working on eighth grade content in math. The other seven-year-old might be working on you know, seven-year-old content, right? Learning addition and subtraction. In fact, I was giving a tour of our school last year and uh, one of the women who was on my tour, she went and looked at this computer screen of the seven-year-old and said, oh my goodness, what are you working on? He said, I'm doing algebra. And she said, algebra, how old are you? He said, I'm seven. And the kid next to him looks at her and he says, he's a lot smarter than he looks. <laughs> and it was just such a great example of yes. our students are able to spend time hanging out with peers their age, getting all of the social and emotional learning, and yet they're getting exactly that ac academic level that they need, you know, again, specific to whatever subject they're in. So they, during this two-hour block, they basically spend 25 minutes of focus time, and then they take breaks, and they get to go outside and play. They get to do, like, recess, just all the things that anybody needs, but especially kids need, yes. right? And then by the time that two hours is done, they're finished with their academics for the day. So they get to have lunch. And then in the afternoon, we go into our workshops. Um, and the goal with those workshops is not only that they're going to learn life skills, but that they're going to have the best time doing it because our number one commitment at our schools is that kids will love school. They will love school. And you know, one of the things I often ask kids and, and People who are listening should ask their kid, you know, do you love school? And often they'll kind of go, eh. But then you say, what do you like best about school? And you know what most people say when you ask, what do you like best about school? Can you guess? Lunch. Lunch, PE, recess, and their friends. And those are all really important things, but it shouldn't be the only things that make kids, kids excited about school. And what we've done is we've kind of created this culture where kids are so excited about school. In fact, we'll even ask them, 
do you love school? Yes or no? We get 90 plus percent of our students say they love school. And more than 60 percent of our students will answer yes to the question of would you rather go to school or go on vacation? And that right there is a high bar because when you have a motivated student, that's when the magic of learning can really happen. And so what we've done is we've used artificial intelligence to really elevate human intelligence, both for what children are capable of doing academically, but also what our adults are able to do, spend time, right? And that's the key is our guides are so critical to our model because they can do what they do best, connect. You call them guides, not teachers. I do. It's not the, you know, the sage on the stage. Instead, it's the guide on the side, that person who comes alongside and, and really gets to know that student and understand uh, when they're feeling challenged, what is it that they tell themselves and how can we help them, you know, get better? I truly believe, and this was true with my kids, and I've seen this true with every student who's walked through our school doors, kids are limitless. And I think they're often underrated in today's environment, but our job as a school is to provide an environment that helps them really unlock their potential. Sometimes when we see children that seem precocious, we make a comment about it. Oh my goodness, look at him. And on one hand, I, I can see how they could be happy. On the other hand, it might be a little embarrassing for them. It's like, why? What's wrong with everybody else? Yeah. How come instead yeah. of like everybody being there? Right. So, we can encourage people to do yes. great things. And did you know, this is an interesting thing I always find, is that um, the highest level of enthusiasm for young people between kindergarten and 12th grade, can you guess what year kids are most enthusiastic? No. Kindergarten. It goes down and we ruined them after every that. single year after that until their junior year of high school when they finally start to see like the light at the end of the tunnel. And that is not how children should spend their career in school, right? We want kids to love school. We want them to learn twice as fast in only two hours, and we want them to develop life skills so that they can go do really big things. Certainly the life skill part, well, I never had. Right. It's just like, okay, next, next, yeah. next, and you... Oh, I don't know what's going on, but you have people can find out what's going on at your school on October 18th. Yes. Right. And then on, on November 14th. Yeah. December we, 10th. Um, I think the best way for a, for a family to understand and get to know a school is come into the school and see what the environment is like. Talk to the parents whose children go to school. Talk Excuse to me, the can kids. Can you put the web address up, Alex? Thank you. Yeah. Talk to the kids who are there. And so we have showcases um, each month where people can come into Alpha School and see if it feels like the right fit. The other thing that we allow our children to do, in fact, we require it, is they have to come and shadow at our school. They get to spend a day at the school to really find out. Now, here's the only warning I will give to parents who are considering that. Don't let your kids shadow if you're not prepared to send them, because most of the time what we find is the kids, after they shadow, they're like, I'm not going back to my old school. I want to come to this school. I understand that. So AI has been around for a long time. But you know, it's it's great that you mentioned that because AI has been around for a long time, but a lot of people think this is just a recent, you know, invention yeah. of the last year. There has been this uh, significant public awareness of it. We're fortunate to have one of the professors at Miami Dade College who mm -hmm. created the four-year program for AI. He was oh, sitting right very there. cool. So I said to him, hey, listen, if uh, I'm creating a story with chat mm -hmm. and it's all about me, mm -hmm. not about anybody else, so I'm going to know if it's correct, yeah. right? And so if I put 10% in, and ch chat does the rest. Can I put my name on it? I said, well, it's ethical. I said, how about 20%? How about 30? And yeah. his answer was the same each time. I said, but so I don't understand this. When a president gives a uh, speech, he doesn't say somebody wrote it. Mm -hmm. And when all the books that are written, I know who wrote it. The guy just did an outline. <laughs> and then somebody else, yeah. some buddies, all right, yeah. put that together. And he said, well, I invite you to come out for some classes. It's so significant as far as the ability for people to gain more and to understand prompting, which is a skill in itself. Absolutely. And there are gonna be plenty of jobs with that. Yeah. Uh, we were fortunate to interview a veterinarian who was doing sterilizations on peacocks. I'm thinking, what <laughs> I heard point? you have a, a big peacock issue yes, here. We do. Yes, So I said, what questions am I gonna ask him? So of course I go to the chat, mm -hmm. and I tell him, her, him, and here's what it came up with. What type of anesthesia, what effect does it have on their flock of the male mm -hmm. and the females? How do you catch them? How long is the procedure? How long does it take them to recover? What's the rate of mortality? All the stuff, things that we would never as human beings thought of. You could, right, if you weren't in that arena, you wouldn't think of it. And then one of the things we realize in life, if you're on chat or chatting with somebody, 
if you don't ask the questions the right way, you're not going to get back the stuff that you want. Right. So t tell us about how you're going to help train those young yeah. minds so they can, in life. Absolutely. And learning, where are they going to learn how to do that? Yeah, it's, it, that is a life skill of learning how to use AI productively, not to cheat, right? And so many traditional schools have banned AI. They're saying, let's stay away from it because we don't want it to be a tool of cheating. What we're doing with our students is we're helping them learn how to use AI tools that help them out. So for example, we have a nine-year-old girl who started her own business. She's making jewelry. And she Good was her. able to achieve her first uh, her first goal that we have at, her, at our school, which is she needed to make $500 in profit. So once she did that, the next goal that she has that we've given her is she needs to raise a thousand dollars from non friends and family that she's going to reinvest into her business and so she had to come up with a business plan for what she was going to do with that and um, so she came up with some ideas you know she was going to invest in better materials she was going to take a jewelry making class and she was going to open a storefront on Etsy now she created her business plan and then she prompted ChatGPT to provide feedback on her business plan and she needed to get a 90 uh, percent out of a hundred uh, on feedback and ranking from this ChatGPT in, before she was going to be allowed to go out and start raising money. So the first time she submitted her business plan, she got a 70%. It gave her some feedback. She incorporated that feedback. She put it back in again. Eventually, she got that 90% and was able to go out and start raising money. This is a nine-year-old child who is learning that, wow, I can take ChatGPT and I can get great advice from that. You know what? Probably better advice than even that adult in the classroom who's maybe never run a jewelry business, doesn't know how to go about fundraising. And we understand you know, when we you ask that. people questions, you have the emotional aspect of it, you have the distractions, and you have people that are giving the information, and even if she wanted to receive it, sometimes they won't receive yeah. it because of the tone or the way they're looking or exactly. the way it sounds and not being able to understand. So, so AI is a tool. Speaking of tone, you know, another thing that we do with our students, we had our fourth and fifth graders do a workshop all around teamwork and communication. And the test to pass for this workshop was they all got to go to an escape room and we mic them up and then we had AI uh, analyze their intonation and their positivity, right? And they had to get a certain ranking. And I'll tell you what, you take a group of fourth or fifth graders that haven't been trained in this type of communication and teamwork, you, you would hear kids say things like, we're never going to get out or let me do that. You don't get to do this or whatever. And what we had done during this six week workshop is helped our students learn how can you be an effective team member? How can you communicate positively? And then AI was the thing that ranked like, yes, these kids pass this, you know, this test. And that's kind of the beauty of where AI can be so helpful. Public speaking, it's a great place for um, kids to practice their public speaking skills. We use an AI tool that they can uh, record themselves, get feedback, and then gain confidence. Certainly fear of public speaking is the number one, two or three things that people can't stand. They would rather do that than you know, rather not public speak than like get bit by a snake, which yes. is crazy to me. And so we, we see that. So you're, you're helping them being fulfilled. You're helping them learn to uh, use AI as a tool. Mm -hmm. You're helping them become public speakers. And when they get that confidence, then they can become self-actualized at any moment and have multiple times that occurs in their young life say, oh, I get it. Absolutely. And we really believe that competence leads to confidence and so when we're able to help students show like hey you can be academically successful and you you know you're not just a C student or an average kid you can be great at anything you set your mind to that's a really helpful confidence booster the other thing especially as our our kids get older one of the things we want to do is we want them to understand that instead of having to just doom scroll TikTok all day or play video games all day they can be contributors and creators not just consumers and that's a really important skill that I think young people need in this world now is what can I do to go help you know the world make an impact on my community and make a positive one not just be a consumer who is attached to a screen all day it's tremendous so what does the next five years look like for you and your team well I will tell you on a grand on a grand level um, education is going to change drastically in the next five years. This is the most exciting time uh, to be a part of you know, education. And the other thing I love about this is every single person in the world should care about education. It is our most untapped resource, human potential, more than solar energy, more than nuclear energy. And what 
uh, artificial intelligence and technology is giving us the ability to do is really transform that educational experience for every single kid. So that's going to be the challenge that schools have across the board is what are they going to do to help develop those students with regard to life skills. So um, I like to think that what we're doing with two-hour learning with the schools that we're creating um, is going to just be the tip of the iceberg in terms of the innovation that we see and the better results. Um, so currently my schools are private schools, but we're also applying for charter status which would, of course, make uh, some of our schools tuition free. Um, and we're able to create a bunch of different models. So at Alpha School, for example, we're doing these really cool life skills workshops. But we also have other schools uh, like Sports Academy, where in the afternoon, kids are doing not just sports and physical activity, but they're doing things like negotiating their major league baseball contract and then writing the press release, announcing that, designing the Nike ad campaign you know, that they're having, uh, giving the game day speech speech as a coach, um, things that are connected to a student's interests um, and also are teaching them life skills. So I think there's going to be a lot of really great things for um, families out there, especially when you have young children. Like the future is really bright. The key is that we have to be willing to adopt a new way of learning. I believe the traditional system of teacher in front of the classroom, it's obsolete. It doesn't work well and it's time for change. Wonderful. And you're going to be part of that change? I am absolutely. I, you know, my, my Instagram and my podcast are called Future of Education, and I truly believe that is what we are doing, is creating the future of education. Okay, so we have one minute left. I would like you to think about people that have helped you along your way. Mm -hmm. um, if you'd like to thank them, you can. Oh. What I'd like you to do is look into the blue camera right over here okay. and, and talk to them, whether they're with us or not. And yeah. if appropriate, again, thank them. If not, that's okay, too. So you, I have the best family in the entire world, and that goes from uh, my parents, my grandparents. Um, I was so fortunate to uh, marry the most incredible man who, when I said, we're taking our kids out of their traditional school and we're starting a school, he said, if it's great for our kids, let's do it. Uh, my daughters, Peyton and Sloan, are incredible inspirations to me, and they're fantastic. And most importantly, it's all of the people who are willing to spend time every single day in our classrooms with our students. It's also those families who are willing to be a part of this education revolution. And you know what? Michael, thanks to you as well. I appreciate this time. Mackenzie, thank you so much for being here. Continued success to you. Thank you. And thanks for making a difference and changing lives. Thank you. We got to get you out to Alpha School. You got to check it out. All right. Hey, folks, which camera am I looking into? That one right there. Thanks for joining us. Remember, take care of yourselves and your family. Have a good day.